Hi everybody and welcome to podcast 2 from the series The Blessing of the Terrible. My name is Letizia and I'm a channeler for the spirit team called Munjiji. You can find more information about this work on my website which is munjiji.com M-U-N-J-I-J-I.com In the first podcast we learned how serious is the virus and why it appeared at this particular time in history. Now, in the second podcast, Munjiji goes on to explain what we can learn from this pandemic, deepening understanding, insight and what it brings to us all. At the end of the Munjiji talk, I will also give you some short explanation of terms that Munjiji team uses, which you may not be very familiar with. Munjiji, this virus has taken the whole world really by, by storm, by shock. But some of us think maybe there's a kind of a, a greater purpose to this event that in a sense there are no accidents and at the end of the day whilst we can't easily control this event we can at least control our reactions to it so is this virus a messenger would you say we have to look at the virus as not just disruptive but as an intelligence that sets you to pause to stop and think because you've been stopped on your track so this is the first effect of any virus yeah you've been stopped there so you have to think well of course the medical and yourself you think how to save yourself how to protect yourself how to use all those things and some of which are gadget that are life giver back to you and that's important but the other aspect that you're looking if that area is not of your concern uh, because you're not getting ill, but you have the effect of the change that the world around you is taking and the others uh, are uh, suffering from, then you see that there is this aspect of the, the virus, the intelligence of the virus as beginning to separate you for what you have taken for granted. Okay. Meeting a friend and uh, being with ten friends uh, in in a, in a place where you like to dance, or uh, has taken away that, so that the virus is helping you to reflect, uh, to say, I really value then that I have five friends that I can meet and uh, share some food and some drinks and some songs and. Uh, and this is happening not just to you, but to a vast portion of humanity that that is being taken away. So that it offers you, so the virus becomes your teacher. It offers you the opportunity to say, oh, I haven't valued those things before. I thought I can just do as I like or when or not. And just you notice you value again the small things. So you see the, the goodness of this virus as well. It puts people away from one another. And of course, human beings are social gatherer. You know, they find strengths together. So it points out also, what are my individual resources when I'm alone? What are my individual resources when I cannot reflect myself into another? Mm. And then for some is, oh, oh, I can discover something about myself I for example you may be more skilled in noticing what you are thinking uh, positive or more or less positive kind of thoughts but a lot of people have no idea even what they are thinking they just act on it yeah because they're always busy doing something so it keeps it noticing their own thinking yeah of course some people can again take a distortion and have too much alcoholic beverage and staring for hours at a screen but again they are confronted with themselves mm. and there is no choice for some of them to
to have a break from that because they have to think carefully if they're going to visit a relative, what age they are, if they're going to go out with their children. You see, so there is a slowing down in order to reflect all your action that you're taking. Yes, it has is to be it meditation, doesn't it? It's like a meditation. Yeah. Is it worth? And this is forcing the... Yeah. Yes? It's forcing the whole world to take this kind of meditation. Shall yeah. I go out? Shall I not? Shall I spend this money? Shall I not? Shall I take a walk in the park? Is this making happy? You see, so they're being forced. So in this way, what is Mother Kali doing is teaching you something. Mm. Yeah? Mm. It's a little bit gruesome, yes. Mm. But it's teaching you a loving lesson to recognize your love and your strength. But true defeat, yeah, mm. true limitation. But in your limitation you discover your freedom. Mm. What part of your being is always free if you can put your energy there? But they are forced to be put their energy and see where their mind is going, yeah? Maybe somebody can pick up a book for the first time, who knows? But, so you can see the other side of everything being slowed down, as you said. And that slowing down gives the potential for openings, yeah? Mm -hmm. Openings of insight that they didn't have time to have. Of course, also for some family, because they have to be together more hours than I ever been together because everybody's working God, yeah. out. So they meet only in the evening. <laughs> they also have to confront their heart and their emotion because mm. they're all together. Mm. Have they really have something valuable to say each other mm. or not? So you see this slowing down and this taking away the power of things that were taken for granted, taking them away, the power of how you have used them regularly and feeling I'm entitled to this, but actually reducing the power in order to discover a different power, he could even see as the blessing of the terrible. Mm. Yeah? <coughs> so again, again, you are already blessed because you have a more reflective nature, you are capable of those thoughts. Yeah? I um, received this question from people asking regarding Mother Kali and they're wondering if Monjiji is uh, Hindu and I have to say Monjiji team they don't follow any uh, specific religion but they use any religious tradition to illumine the understanding of the people listening uh, to their teachings so they are including all the traditions for guidance in the spiritual journey. Mother Kali in particular is used in the Hindu tradition and she is a warrior goddess and in um, this instance uh, Mojiji is mentioning that she is teaching a little bit gruesome he says lesson because she is a warrior uh, goddess she has a tremendous powers of combative uh, against many many demons and uh, in a sense she's saying she teaches us through defeat and through limitation so what is pointing here that it is a defeat of all aspect of ourselves that are obsolete all aspect of ourselves that are unnecessary all the things that in this second podcast is mentioning where we experience limitation and so Mother Kali which is one of the most powerful symbols of transformation in the Hindu pantheon is, is a force, is an energy of purification is a force of illumination is a source also of destruction and it has to do also with time, Kali, also Kala means time and has to do with the coming at the right time, the ripening of a time in which transformation needs to take place and again I use the word, is a little bit gruesome 
as Manjuji said, and that is the suffering that we experience through this pandemic. But it, its a purpose is really to free us from limitation and to mature, to educate and to liberate our power of divinity in ourselves or our power of illumination.